In this video, we're going to take a look at the ROG Ryujin 3 360 ARGB and test its cooling capabilities. And it all starts now. Special thanks to GGG Mall for sponsoring this video. They offer Windows 10 CD keys at very affordable prices. But they also sell items like in-game currencies, PC peripherals, and game keys at their website. Use our promo code JEGS to save 25% on your purchase. You can check them out in the description below. Now back to the video. Let's start with the unboxing. Opening the box here greeted with an ROG card embedded on a cardboard which covers the package. The pump block and the radiator are both covered with plastics while the three pieces of 120mm ARGB fans are inside these boxes. There is a compartment located at the front of the box which contains the stickers, manual, and the accessories needed to mount the pump block. The accessories include one male and female magnetic fan cables, a back plate for Intel setups, two pieces of AMD adapter brackets, two sets of thumb screws compatible for both AMD and Intel sockets, four pieces of standoff screws for Intel sockets, and 12 pieces of radiator and fan screws. Before we continue working on the reusion, let's first prepare the system we're going to use for the installation. And I do apologize for the mix match of brands the setup is using. Unfortunately, this is the only board I have for the AM5 chipset. First, we need to remove the top cover of our Height Y40 case and start removing the radiator screws. After that is done, we just need to unscrew the pump block, unmount it together with the radiator, and we're done for now. Going back to the reusion, let's install the 120mm ARGB fans on the radiator. Again, these fans are magnetic, which means you only need one cable in order to daisy chain these fans. All you need to do is align the magnetic connectors on each side of the fan, connect the fan connector, which we'll get to in a little bit, and you should be good to go. As for the radiator, just remove the hex protection caps on each side in order to gain access to the screw holes for the fans. After screwing the fans on the radiator, all that is left to do is to connect the fan cable to our fans. The cable is also magnetic, making it easy to install. Just look for the connector dock located at either ends of the fans, attach the cables in place, and we're done. And with that, the radiator is ready for mounting. Now we need to install the mounting brackets. Since we're using an AM5 chipset setup, we're going to use the AMD adapter brackets. The brackets have arrows pointing towards the CPU, which serves as an indicator for its proper orientation. Just simply follow the indicators, screw it in place, and we're done. Now we mount the radiator to our case. After removing the top cover of the case, align the radiator to the corresponding screw holes at the top. Screw everything down in place and prepare to mount the pump block. Before we mount the pump block, untie the USB cable and the 4-pin cable. After which, remove the pump cover by simply pulling it away from the pump block. This will simplify the mounting process to the motherboard. Remove the plastic covering the pre-applied thermal paste, prepare the thumb screws provided, align the pump, then screw down the thumb screws. Next we want to return the pump cover. Route the cables of the pump cover to go through the top cable management holes. Then pull the cables while returning the pump cover. Let's start connecting cables to the motherboard. Grab the 4-pin cable off the pump block and connect it to a 4-pin CPU fan header. This is usually located at the top side of the motherboard. Next, we connect the USB 2.0 connector. Grab the cable, bring it to the bottom side of the motherboard through the cable management holes and connect it to the USB 2.0 header. Finally, we're going to connect the 4-pin fan cable and ARGB connector from the radiator fans to the motherboard. Again, grab the 4-pin fan cable and bring it to the top side of the motherboard and through the cable management holes and connect it to a 4-pin header. For the ARGB connector, find the 3-pin ARGB header and connect the cables. Now it's time to close up the case and see the reugen in action.
After installing the Ryujin 3 on your system, go to ROG's website and download the Armory Crate app. This software allows you to customize the LCD display and the fan curve of the AIO. After installing Armory Crate, this is what it looks like. From here, you need to click on Device, select the Ryujin 3, and this is how you customize the LED display on the pump block. For example, if I want to choose this default animation provided by ROG, I simply need to hit Apply and display on the LCD block changes. But for example, if I want a custom wallpaper, all I need to do is to upload the file, try and crop it to get the best image possible, hit save, hit apply, and you have the custom wallpaper on the LCD block. The screen can display up to 32 megabytes of images, but you can also upload GIFs and wallpapers. For the GIFs, the screen can support up to 2,000 frames. This is a huge upgrade compared to the previous Ryujin 2. Going back to the app, you can also choose the hardware monitor, which displays different stats like temperature, fan speed, and frequency. This is my go-to choice for the LCD display simply because it displays the stats I need when I benchmark. So just hit apply, and you have the monitor on the LCD display. Now it's time to see how the Ryujin performs against NZXT's X73 on synthetic benchmarks and games. On idle loads, the Ryujin outperforms the X73 by almost 7 degrees on average. Do take note that the CPU used for this test was a Ryzen 7800X3D, ambient temps during testing were around 20 degrees Celsius, and cooling profiles of both AIO were on standard performance. On time spy Direct X12, both AIOs almost had identical performance, but the Ryujin from time to time would have 3 degrees lower temperatures compared to the X73. A huge difference can be seen on Cinebench, where the Ryujin cooled the Ryzen 7800X3D by almost 9 degrees lower compared to the X73, which resulted into higher boosts. For Mark, CPU stress test also painted a similar picture as the Ryujin easily outperformed the X73 by a large margin. On The Last of Us Part 1, the Ryujin managed to keep the 7800X3D cooler by around 2 degrees compared to the X73, while on Hogwarts Legacy, the Ryujin was 4 degrees cooler compared to the X73. Now we test a mostly CPU-bound game, Dota 2. Again, the Ryujin outperformed the X73 by as much as 4 degrees at a given moment. The scene tested here was a 5v5 clash to stress the CPU as much as possible. On CSGO, another CPU-bound game, the 7800X3D with the Ryujin almost ran well below 50 degrees at a certain time, while the X73 was hovering around 50 to 55 degrees. The newly released Diablo 4 also ran cooler with the Ryujin, as it almost ran 5 degrees cooler on average against the X73. This was tested while standing in Kyovachad, so expect heavier loads when fighting in dungeons full of mobs. And lastly, Black Desert Online. MMO games like these tend to be CPU hungry, and thus fits well for our testing. On Heidel near the storage area, where many players converge most of the time, the Ryujin was cooler by almost 3 degrees on average. Overall, the Ryujin 3 360 ARGB is a great addition to the 360mm radiator AIO market. If you really want an LCD display at the pump lock of your AIO, this is certainly something to consider. That's all for now. See you guys on the next video.